Calamity Jack, Shannon and Dean Hale, illustrated by Nathan Hale. For Max and Meg, the best teammates a couple of schemers could ever hope for. To Greg, Riley, and Rebecca. Free in-laws, free outlaws. And with thanks to Shannon and Dean. No relation, but a lot of admiration. Part 1. The Beanstalk Bonanza. I think of myself as a criminal mastermind. With an unfortunate amount of bad luck. I was born to scheme. See? You can tell just by looking at me. I wasted no time. My first true scheme was when I was at age two. Let's call it... The Sugar Bowl Plan. I'd see something I wanted, and my mind couldn't help figuring out how to get it. My early years were measured by great plans, and unexpected consequences. Skipping ahead to my school years, we'll call this stunt... The Great Sandwich Caper. Now, when I say unexpected consequences, I'm not suggesting my plans didn't work. They worked. They did. But you can't plan for everything, right? The grocery job. Of course, the key to success of any plan is to get the right people involved on both sides. The takers and the takees. The purloined pig. Pinging up the right chum is vital. I feed cane mutiny pretty good at picking chumps out of the crowd. The ice cream con. More and more, the we became me and Prudence, my favourite partner. I don't know that I've ever fought twice about the folks we swindled. One, please. What horror! Police! He's serving pixie ice! I'm out of here! I figured if they were dumb enough to fall for it, then they deserve to lose. No harm done, right? The failed flamingo filching. Some of our adventures were downright risky, but I felt invincible in my papa's cowhide jacket. It was the one thing of his we didn't hock after he died of fever. I wore it like armor. I mostly tried to keep my shenanigans from my mama. She had enough to worry about. Hey, you didn't pay for lunch yet! For that, Hash, you should be paying me, Cookie. She took care of me half the neighborhood, and a few stray animals besides. Get back here, you hobgoblin! Ha! <laughs> Third freeloader this week. I don't know how I'm going to afford fixing that oven. But folks disrespecting Mama? Well, that chap my hide. So I devised... The bowler hat heist. This wasn't just about making sport of someone I didn't like, or scoring a bit of glory. Now I was feeling the rush of justice. I felt sure I found my calling. Swipe. Mama didn't seem pleased to share the spoils. The fat banker fiasco. But I, I'd had a taste of justice now, and I began to set my sights higher. Flip. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Whoa! What if I could scheme my way into real money? Enough so Mama wouldn't have to sell the bakery. She'd understand then, right? She might even be proud. But there were always those unexpected consequences. What have I done to deserve you? Haven't I raised you right? It was the first time I'd ever seen her cry. I decided then to quit my scheming and be a good, honest boy. After one last caper, a big one, something that could enter troubles for good, I began to plot. I began to plan. Prudence was up for whatever I could think of, so long as she got her part of the loot. Never knew a pixie with such an appetite for hats. One morning, as Prue and I brainstormed potential marks, Blunderbore came to Mama's bakery on his weekly visit. Blunderbore. Giant. Big business boss. Foofy rich with his fingers in a lot of political pies. And every week, he bought his own special flower. Nutcase. Something about him gave me the creeps. Crack! You'll need to pay for that! I could shut down your pathetic bakery of one letter to the city coven. Just keep baking my bread, and we'll be pleasant neighbours. There's no way we can pay to have that fixed. We're two weeks behind in rent as it is. Jack... Be useful for once and, and take care of it! I just knew what to do. The Blunderbore business. 
Step one, snooping. If you were Blunderbore, where would you keep your valuables? Up there, tucked away in my nifty floating penthouse. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. Step two, determine obstacles. How do I get up there? I can flip top alone, but if the loot's heavy, then we're sunk. Wouldn't you know, decrease the chains. Keep low, there are giants inside. Ah! My hat! Chomp. Quick, stroll, stroll! What? Stroll around and pretend like you can't fly before it eats you. Pretend? Such a lovely day for a stroll. Did you have a rock? I see it, I see it. It's circling again. Remember a rock? Just a rock, sitting here. Nice rock impersonation. The beast passed us over. Cocky walks can't stand at anything else that flies. But did it have to eat my best hat? Yep, I was afraid of something like this. Some fancy folk had guard beasts on their roofs to, to keep birds and nosy flying folk at a distance. None were so deadly as the Jabberwock. It could have been prudence and not just a hat snapped by that creature's jaws. Besides, Blunderbore is not a person to cross lightly. I was thinking of scouting out a new target. Jack, come in here for a minute. Time you had this. It was his grandfather's warband. He'd been the chief of this clan and a hero besides. She told me stories, but she never let me touch it, let alone... She didn't explain, but I just knew. Mama guessed what I was trying to do and gave me her blessing. Danger or not, I was determined not to let her down. Step three, make the plan. The Jabberwock ate anything that flew, but it didn't bother giants climbing down a ladder. They sometimes lowered down, so if we had our own ladder, we needed the funds to buy supplies, and cash was not flowing in those days. I had to find something to pawn. So, I... Never mind. Are you alright? Fine. I still can't even think about it. Feeling defenseless without my jacket, not to mention cold, I went with Prue in search of something spiffy that'd get us past the Jabberwock. Of course, to score the unusual niceties smuggled in from the old world, you just gotta skulk to a market that's just a touch black. Step 4. Gather equipment. I wanted to go from the ground straight up to the floating penthouse, bypass the Jabberwock's perch, all without flying. What could we use as an insanely tall ladder? Those beans grew as fast and tall as promised. I never did trust vegetables. Doggone it, we've been hoodwinked! Now I'll have to get our hands on some more dough to buy something else! Coo, 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 coo! Lousy, useless beans. Powerful ache in my gut. At me. I lost my papa's jacket for nothing. I kept one, just to remind me not to be stupid and trust magic again. That night, I returned late from an unsuccessful pursuit of an illicit financial opportunity. Well, if that don't be all. Step five, see the plan through. I was afraid prisons would be sore, but I couldn't spare the time to go find her. The giants could have discovered the beanstalk at any moment. I had to act quickly. Yeesh. Don't look, Jack. Just sleep. Ah, 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 ah. I climbed past the beast and gained the floating penthouse. Luck was mine. Blunderbore, sir. The men are ready to attach the Omniphone pipe in the penthouse. This wretched goose is being uncooperative with its alleged golden eggs. May as well go have a look. Golden eggs? That'll do. Ah! Shh, 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 shh. Uh, you know how Blunderbore is? Where it allows precious things to be unguarded for a minute. Tiffany, that you? You seen my shower cap? Squawk! What was that noise? Just lumpy hollering again. Hey, you, try sharing without getting your hair wet. Wasn't there a goose in that cage? Cracka, racka, 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 crutch. Cracker, cracker. 
If that goose manages to fly off the zeppelin and gets eaten by Mr. Jabbers, the ball scurries our eyeballs for juice. Good point. I'll go reel in the walk just in case. Squawk! Do you want to be boom bread? So shush already. Clang! Squawk! something over here. Has that big plant always been there? I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Maybe Mr. B is starting a garden. Reminds me of the giant orchids of... Wait, do you smell a human? <laughs> Whoa. Squawk! Squawk! And so I had to hop from rooftop to rooftop, hunting the goose that I'd only just stolen. All night long. No rest for the wicked, Mama would say. Squawk! Gotcha! Finally got home near dawn. Wondering how I was ever going to sleep again after what I'd seen in Mr. In Blunderbore's penthouse, when... Craig! What's going on? Is it an earthquake? Craig, jails are that! The beanstalk's going to take down the tenement! Something's growing out there! Get out of the building! It's coming down! Does Mr. B know his plant is uprooting a building? The bus didn't do this. Get off the beanstalk! Do you hear me? I've chopped through, it's going to... Sip. Pfft. Eric! Ah! Uh. 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 You! Ah! Uh. Don't. Things look a mighty rickety in the tenement. Th that's everyone! And, and Justin! Tarum! Mama, you're right, did you get hurt? This was you, wasn't it? Me? I, I didn't. Don't you stand in front of me with our home and bakery and a heap of bricks. Not even the tin type of your father saved. And lie to me. I'm, I'm sorry, Mama. I was just trying to... I, me I messed up again, but I'll, I'll fix it all. I'll build us a new one. I'll... Enough, Jack! But this time, I, I really have a way to make lots of gold fast. I mean, you trust me, right? That's why you gave me this. I thought it'd help you remember your boots. Try to be good for once. Instead, you lie and scheme and destroy everything. Everything! I can't talk to you right now. Just go. Just go. Where's the doomed boy who killed one of my giants? And so I went. I figured she'd be better off without me, and with Blunderbore's giants on the lookout. They didn't seem to be much good sticking around. I hopped on the iron horse and headed out west, and didn't get off until we stopped somewhere I'd never heard of. My plan was to hide from the giants, wait for Goldie to lay some eggs, then head back to make things up with Mama. Build the nicest tenement, tenement and bakery in the New World Territories. Sure, I could be good. Then, things got complicated. But sometimes, that's a good thing. Long story short, my friend Rapunzel turned around the cesspool that was Gotham's Reach. I guess I helped some, and that last bean did a bit of good. And now I'm coming home, Mama. I'm coming home.